Welcome back to the Super Data Science Series on Seaborn, where we're exploring different types of visualizations and the information related to building them. In the last video, we left off building this group bar plot here, but we also left off with a challenge and homework for you to try and develop some solutions that will help us visualize this further. As we can see, it's a little compact and group where we cannot see the data that clearly. After we work through our solution to the homework, we're going to be working on a joint kernel density estimate with Seaborn. We'll get into that in a bit, and it will look something along the lines of this with bivariate data. But for now, we can get back to our Jupyter Notebook, where we're working in our example one Jupyter Notebook, and we're going to start with the following to resolve the clarity of the data down bottom here. So what can we do here to fix this? There are multiple or a range of solutions here. We are working again with Seaborn it's built on top of matplotlib, so you can use some matplotlib related information to solve this. You can also think about what we're going to do, editing the RC params, and we're also going to pass in a rotation here. So let's get started with that. We can jump back up here, use the following. We want to build the two so we can compare them. We'll pass in the following, setting the same graph here. We're also going to do PLT for the matplotlib. We're going to work with our X ticks down here, the X ticks, and we're going to use a rotation for a 70 degree rotation. Rotation equals 70. And now we also are going to set the RC params for PLT dot RC params, open brackets, in parentheses, X ticks, or X tick, excuse me, dot label size, close parentheses, and adjusting the label size, equal to 9. We have that now. Let's pass it in, and then we'll take a look and see if we can compare the two graphs and see what changed. So what we did was we rotated the values down bottom, and we also set the label size to 9, decreasing the label size. But just with the rotation, or the 70 rotation, we can see the values pretty clearly. You can experiment further with the rotation and label size uh, as it relates to the bottom of the data. Again, we're using the matplotlib, the X ticks, Seaborn built on matplotlib. With the rotation, we're also using and adjusting our RC params to get the data to be clear down bottom. So it's just one solution. There are a range of them, but you can always look at adjusting one size is kind of a given. Always think about adjusting size to make these more clear, or if they are too big to degrease them, it will also help with clarity. And you can also, using this example, think about rotating the angle. If it's not fitting, just adjust it a little bit and it might help the visualization be more attractive. And also, if you used a different solution, if you want to share it, if you want to discuss it or have any questions, please feel free to post them below. Again, there's a range of ways to do this. This is just a quick example that we can rotate the angle, we can change label sizes, you're editing RC params along with the X ticks, but you can use a variety of options, and if you have anything different that you want to discuss, please share them below. Now, we can get moving on to our next plot. We're going to be working with the joint kernel density estimate. This is an example here, and we're going to be building our own. So we can jump back into the Jupyter Notebook, and we're going to start setting up our joint kernel density estimate. And as a quick note, since we're going to be working with bivariate data, for those of you who are not familiar with bivariate data, and just to add on some useful information, we can take a look in bivariate data is data on each of two variables where each value of one of the variables is paired with a value of the other variable. The pairs of the value of these two variables are often represented as individual points in a plane using a scatter plot. The kernel density estimate is a type of scatter plot. This is done so that the relationship, if any, between the variables is easily seen. We can visualize the relationship between the variables by looking at our scatter plot and our kernel density estimate. We'll take a look in a second. For example, bivariate data on a scatter plot could be used to study the relationship between stride lengths and length of legs, just as an example. But if we go and look at our joint kernel density estimate that Seaborn has for us, we can use this to visualize the relationships between the variables or the numbers on the graph. And we're going to be creating one similar to this using NumPy, but let's jump back to our Jupyter Notebook and we can get started coding. Now, for those of you who are joining us and are new to this tutorial series, if you haven't run these statements in the top of the notebook, we have imported pandas and Seaborn already, but we can do it again just in case you don't have it. We can import Seaborn as SNS, 
import pandas as pd. And now we're going to be using numpy. So we need to import numpy as np. Always the best thing to do is to set your import statements for the top of the notebook just for organizational purposes, but you can also use them in the cells. It's no problem. But if you want to always scroll up and see what import statements you've used for the entirety of the notebook, if you keep them contained in one cell, it's just easier, especially for debugging purposes or to know what you're using. But we are using these three here and we're going to use our style SNS as in Seaborn dot set style equal to white just for a little clear of a background for the visualization and we are going to set our random state equal to numpy dot random dot random state and let's give it a value of 10 as this is going to generate random numbers for our kernel density estimate for the distribution. And now to continue, we want to set our mean and our covariance, which we can do with the following. You can also experiment with these values as well <clears throat> to shift the density estimate around to visualize further. We'll set it as two and two. And let's set our covariance equal to open brackets and open parentheses. We'll do from the example 1.5 outside the parentheses, comma, open parentheses again, 0. 0.5 and 1. So let's also define our x1 and x2. We have to give our values to each. We're going to set using the rs.multivariate function, underscore normal. And in our parentheses, we have to use our arguments of mean, covariance and assign a value 500. Again, if you are looking for some additional information, you can scroll over to Seaborn and take a look. It is a type of joint plot, so you can see some information related along with other examples, some pretty cool examples you can see and scroll through. And we're working with our joint kernel density estimate. And now to sum it up, we have to use pandas to set a series for our values equals PD dot series if I could spell, we want x1 name equals, let's use, we have to open parentheses, let's give our name for our x and y. Let's do example x. We can copy this, paste it in here. We're going to do x2. We want to replace this as x2 as well, and we'll do example y. All right, we can now sum this up to plot. Since this is our third plot, we'll do, besides the fixing of this, we could call it number four. We'll do example three equals SNS dot joint plot. These are values of X1, X2. We need to set the kind for the type of plot that we're using here. And we're going to specify, since we're using the kernel density, as in KDE, with that, we can also finish this up by setting the size equal to 7 and the space equal to 0. Closing parentheses. And now we can run it. Take some analysis away from our Seaborn plot. And there you go. We have our kernel density estimate. We can see based on the values that we're using, the mean, we're also using the random state from NumPy to create the density starting from here. We have our two and our two from our from our mean and expanding outwards. You can also customize further. I really encourage you to experiment with the values here to get a deeper understanding. You can also, for some customization, here specify a color equal to, and we have it in blue. Let's try a G for green. We're on that. We have green. We can swap that out for actually let's try red first. We have red. You know, some of them look a little better than others. I do like the blue. And we also have the yellow. We can switch it back to use the original blue or actually a little of a different shade of blue. If you want to set it back to the default, we can remove that. And there you have it, the kernel density estimate. Awesome job working through this so far. Now this one was a pretty straightforward approach. We were just using NumPy and random created um, values to display this along with creating our own mean or covariance. 
and the specifying the type, again, the kernel density or the joint kernel density estimate of the joint plot. And we did this because in the next video, we're going to switch it up a little bit. We are going to make things a little more challenging and we're going to move on to the following. We're going to be working with a seaborne heat map. Now, heat map, they are pretty intense visualizations. As you can see, it's basically creating this grid. We can see here, visualizing through these years and the months, a heat map specifying intensities. This is one of seaborne's powerful visualizations. The heat map displays a lot of quality information and lets you obtain some analysis looking at it pretty quickly. So this is what we're going to be working on in the next one. If you have any questions, from this video, or if you have any questions about we've, what we've done up to this point, or in general, other ideas for implementation or feedback, please let us know below. And, and on a last note, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel, where you will get up-to-date weekly information, really just a great way to stay in touch with what's going on in industry. And I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial of our series.